Hi, my name is Sean Bonley with IBM. I'm part of the Advanced Technical Skills Team located out of Dallas, Texas. And I'm about to give an overview presentation of how to perform a snapshot migration from PowerHA version 7.1.0 to version 7.1.1. And I will follow it up with a sequence of pre-recorded videos of actually performing the migration. So first, let me give an overview of my demo cluster configuration. I have a two-node cluster that is running PowerHA 7.1 SP4 on AIX 616 SP5. When I get done with the upgrade, I will have 7.1.1 SP2 with AIX 617 SP3. Now, migrating from 7.1.0 to 7.1.1 does require a full cluster outage. You can only perform either a snapshot migration or an offline migration. So as you can see, I have a simple two-node cluster, uh, hot standby configuration, a very basic cluster. This is the same cluster I use for all of my demos. Now let me give an overview of the steps required to actually perform a snapshot upgrade. Uh, first and foremost, you have to create a snapshot. Uh, at some point prior to actually upgrading to the newest levels, in this demo, I will actually create the snapshot on a live running cluster. You will actually need to stop the cluster services on all nodes in the cluster. And this next step here is actually very unique to upgrading from 7.1.0 to 7.1.1 specifically, mainly if you have to upgrade your CAA version level. 7.1.1 requires what we call CAA version 2. And because of that change, we actually have to remove the CAA cluster. Now this can be done either via the RM cluster command, like I will show in the demonstration, or you can actually go to SMIDI HACMP, manage the cluster, remove the cluster, and then also tell it to remove the definition, and that will delete the CAA cluster for you. Then we're going to update to the latest TL and SP levels and reboot. After reboot, these next two steps uh, generally should not be required. If you already are starting with the 710 cluster, the Etsy cluster R host should already be populated. However, in my early testing, when applying the updates, it did actually overwrite the Etsy cluster R host file. So, it's important to check it and make sure that the contents are there. If it's not, update the entries and refresh CLCOMD. However, hopefully by the time you attempt this process, this won't be needed, but it's rather, you know, it's nice to point it out and not need it. Then uninstall PowerHA. With a snapshot up upgrade, you actually deinstall the previous version, install the new version. Then we're going to manually run CL Convert Snapshot to convert the 710 snapshot to a 711 format. Then restore the cluster configuration from the snapshot, and that will actually synchronize the cluster. And when it synchronizes the cluster, it is actually going to uh, recreate the CAA cluster for us as well. And then you simply restart all nodes in the cluster. So before I actually perform the demonstration, here's just a, a list of a few other demos I've put together. Also, you can follow me on Twitter as PowerHAGuy. I really don't send out that information, much information, maybe one a week, probably just a couple times a month. It's usually stuff like new supported hardware or if a new release or new service pack comes out or if there's actually some you know, new hot topic or pressing problem that I feel like the masses need to be aware of to maybe help make the lives of the admins out there a little easier, then I try to share that information as well. So now I'm actually going to get started. I actually have three pre-recorded sessions of showing the demo. So what I have here is my two-node cluster is up and running. 
you can see that both nodes are stable. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually create a snapshot. Now, the snapshot is one of the SMIT menu options that I rarely can remember where it actually is. So I've actually become a big fan of the SMIT menu option of can't find what you're looking for, and then simply just pull it up and then do a search. So you can see I did a search on snapshot. I found the menu option. And now I'm going to just give it a description and create the cluster. Now this will only take a handful of seconds for it to execute. So while that's running, if you look at the bottom of the screen, my cluster status, that's actually a tool called QHA. You can actually download that offline. So now I've already created the cluster snapshot. I'm ready to stop cluster services on all nodes. So you can do that from one side. So what I'm doing here is telling it to stop both cluster nodes and bring the resource groups offline. In my case, it's only one resource group. And you may be familiar with the fact that when you do a start or stop of the cluster, you actually get the OK prompt very quickly. But all that means is that the commands have been queued up and they've, they've been accepted. So you can see at the bottom that it's still running events. What I'm showing at the top is that I do actually have a CAA cluster definition. You can do LS cluster and see that it's there because we're actually getting ready to remove it manually. Also at the top, you can see another utility called QCAA. Both QHA and QCAA can be uh, downloaded uh, off the Internet. So at the bottom, we're just waiting for the node down to complete and for the cluster to go back to STinit on both nodes. You can see that node Jessica has completed coming down. Now Jordan is down as well. So both nodes are down. I'm now ready to actually remove the CAA cluster. Now, removing the cluster, this is actually going to take a minute or two. So while that's, I'm actually going to advance a few seconds in time. I promise I'm not going to skip anything that you uh, need to see. I'm just getting ready to perform the update. Okay, we should be getting close. And then what I'm going to do when this completes is show that both nodes no longer have the CAA cluster definition. So you can see the CAA VG private is gone. When I run LS cluster, it tells me there is nothing. So now I'm going to do the same thing on the second node. You can see that CAA VG private is gone and that there is no cluster services. So now I'm going to go ahead and perform the update to TL7 SP3. Once I kick off the install, this actually runs almost an hour in my environment. So once it starts, I'm actually going to swap over to the second recording that picks up with I've completed the update and I have rebooted the system and we'll see in the second video that I start with the TL7 SP3 updates. Okay, so now let me switch over to the second one. So here you can see that both have been rebooted. I'm just verifying that the levels are TL7 SP3. I'm also showing that I have 7104 of the cluster installed. So what I need to do is actually remove the cluster file sets on both systems. So I'm just doing this through smitty remove cluster dot asterisk. I'll kick this off on the first one and I'll switch over and start doing it on the second one.
So we've got cluster asterisk running on the second one. Now this actually takes about a minute and a half for it to finish executing. So I'm actually going to bump up about a minute in time while this is running. I promise again you're not going to miss anything. I'm just speeding this along to make it more time efficient. And we're getting a little bit closer. Speed this up a little bit more. The top one is close to being done. There we go. Top one's finished. Second one should be done in just a couple of seconds. And there's the second one. So now I've removed, I'm just verifying that the cluster file sets is truly gone on both systems. You can see I have no cluster file sets installed. So now I'm ready to upgrade to, or I say upgrade, we're technically doing a new install of 711 with SP2. I have both the install images and the service pack 2 in the same install directory. So all I'm doing here is just going through the pick list of what I want to install. I usually only restall pretty much the bare minimum requirements. If you're not using GPFS, you don't care about the CFS file set. If you're not using NFS4, you don't care about the NFS file set. Uh, since this is not a upgrade from 6.1 or below up to 7.1, I really don't care about the MIG check either. So again, I'm just going through this pick list real quick. And once this starts the install on the first system, I'm going to repeat and do the same thing on the second system. But what I'll do is I'll actually advance the recording in time again to speed this along. Always remember to accept the new license agreement. And so we'll start off the install on the first node. Now I'm doing the same thing on the second node. And so this is where I'm going to advance in time a bit. just to speed this along. And once I actually start the install on the second node, I will switch over to the third video, which actually picks up with right after I completed the install. So we don't have to wait for the install on the video to actually complete. Okay, so now that's off and running on the second node. I'm going to go ahead and click over and change to the last demo. So there is the both screens. The 711 update is completed. So now what I'm doing is switching over on the first node over to the snapshots directory where is the snapshot is saved that I created as the first step. So now I'm going to convert the snapshot. The minus V tells it what version am I converting from, which is 710, and then what is the name of the snapshot file. Now, as you can see here, the actual seal convert snapshot command is actually saved in user ESS bin cluster, but in a conversion directory. So I'm going to just rerun that command again. This too will also only take just a handful of seconds for it to complete. The conversion is, is fairly quick. And then we have to remember to also uh, still verify the Etsy cluster R host. And I'll show that again in a second before we apply the snapshot. So I'm just showing on the second system that I do have the 711 stuff. There's my entries in Etsy cluster R host. So in my case, they didn't get deleted. But in some of my previous tests on earlier versions, it did get overwritten. So the R host is good on both sides. I don't have to refresh uh, CLCOMD. So now that I've converted the snapshot, all that's left is to restore the configuration from that snapshot, which will 
push the configuration across and recreate the CAA cluster, and then also turn around and restart the cluster services. So again, I'm using the option, can't find what I'm looking for, did a search on snapshot, going to tell it to restore, chose the snapshot I wanted, and let it run. Now this will actually take, in my test, it took just a bit short of two minutes for it to actually finish. So while this is going on, I'm just showing on the bottom that I still don't have a CAA cluster configured. So I check the topology and I check the disk output every so often to see when it gets created. Um, and that's about the only thing that's going on during this time. So again, I'm going to advance in time several seconds. You can see I still have no topology at the bottom. Oops, I may have went too far. There we go, now it's back. Okay, so let me just back this up a few seconds. There we go. I got the okay on the uh, restoring the cluster. Now you can see that my CAA VG private is back. I've got it on both systems. If I do the um, LS cluster, let's see, I can, before I restart my cluster, all, all that's left is I need to restart the cluster on all the nodes. If you look at the bottom it says the state is not configured. About the only time you're going to see that not configured state is when it's a brand new installation and pretty much the first prior to the first time of you starting it. So you can see this says not configured. Uh, all I'm doing now is restarting the cluster. This too takes about a minute and a half for it to start. So I'm just going to bump up a few seconds in time while this is running. So again, I've got the OK, but you know that the events actually haven't started at the bottom yet. And while we're waiting for that to execute, I can show you that if you're familiar with the contents of the CAA volume group previously, there were file systems called CL repos 1 and 2, and now in CAA version 2, those file systems no longer exist. So you can see at the bottom that we are now running the resource group acquisition on Jessica. It's acquired the service address, the data volume group, and ran the start server script. So Jessica is up and running now. It's stable. So now we're just waiting for the second node to rejoin the cluster. Okay. So now the cluster is stabilized. We're stable on both nodes in the cluster. I can see my LS cluster output. And I have successfully performed a snapshot migration from 710 to 711. So, of course, if you have any questions about this or any other demo, feel free to send me an email at sbodily at us.ibm.com. Thanks.